Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and in particular we're talking about how to prepare as a dungeon master the Lost Mine of Fandalva. Well, it's probably the most played adventure of all time for Dungeons and Dragons 5e and so preparation a lot of people went particularly because it's like the first adventure as a new dungeon master that you'll tend to wind up running and so there's always that fear that you won't do enough preparation before running or starting the adventure which is why I'm doing this particular live stream to cover that topic as best I can and I've already done a couple of videos on the topic but the information is sort of scattered all over the place whereas this is supposed to be very focused on a particular topic and that is just the preparation side for the dungeon master so very first thing you absolutely need to go and do of course most of you will already know this because it's pretty obvious is you'll need to go and purchase yourself a copy of the Dungeons and Dragons 5e starter set where you will find the Lost Mine of Fandalva, the core rules, some dice, and some pre-generated character sheets. And I know that everybody here has probably already got that, but I'm just going to make that clear. I know that a lot of people have tried to access the, the adventure as a PDF online from particular sources or various sources. So if you don't have all the parts because you didn't buy the box set, you can get the pre-made character sheets from the Wizards of the Coast website. You just go into uh, the, the character sheet section and they will list. So it's a PDF, you can download all of that. As for the adventure itself, I don't think you can legally access it unless you buy the starter set. I could be wrong, I could be wrong. The core rules you can access for free on the Dungeons and Dragons official website so you can download that so that's not an issue and it does include a Dungeon Masters um, uh, booklet or PDF as well which has monsters in it uh, which would be included in the back of the Lost Mine of Fandalva so you can probably piece together all the bits and pieces you need if you don't have the starter set and of course you use your phone if you don't have some dice so that covers the very basics of it. Next make sure that you read the adventure at least once and you need to be not you don't have to remember everything but you need to remember the key points and whether you take notes or not take notes that's really up to you but there are some key points you'll need to remember throughout the story so because it's a bit of a sandbox it can go pretty much anywhere I know a lot of people say look you don't need to actually worry about that sort of thing it's it's unimportant you could just run it out of the box as is but I'll trust me, my players have tripped me up and I know that a few Dungeon Masters have mentioned that their players have asked questions that weren't in the front of the adventure, that were scattered throughout the adventure or near the back of the adventure and that has really sort of caused them a few hassles. So my suggestion to you is read the adventure right through at least once but you don't have to worry about memorizing everything. Okay, the most important aspect I guess is uh, not worrying about the rules, but you do at least need to read and understand the core rules for running the game, otherwise it's going to be really hard, which is why I have a channel designated specifically to showing and explaining to you how to do that. Now if you have uh, picked up the Dungeons and Dragons 5e starter set and it's a first printing, it won't have the errata included in the adventure. So you'll need to download that, and I'm going to provide the errata, if you don't have that, down in the description. Most of you will probably have a second or third or even newer printing, which will have all of the errata included in the adventure, so you won't have to worry about that, which is always nice. That's ex excellent. Uh, now make photocopies of certain sections of the book. Really important, I find that was probably the mistake I made when I was running the adventure. So don't make my mistake. Go and photocopy the, the pre-generated or pre-made character sheets so that you can reuse them. I'd be surprised. I mean, you can print them off the Dungeons & Dragons website, but the, the, hard, the hard card, so they last a long time, and you obviously have permission to photocopy them because it says it on the bottom of the page. But I would photocopy them because you don't know what the players are going to do with them. They'll lose them, they'll get covered in um, gooey stuff, coffee, spilled mountain, uh, mountain dew, all that sort of stuff. So I would suggest 
photocopying the pre-made character sheets. Now, for those dungeon masters who feel that they have to make photocopies of blank character sheets, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you can if you want, but there's nothing saying that you have to provide absolutely everything for your players to play the game. You can say, look, you know, you can download the blank character sheets from here. My suggestion is you do that, and if you want to make your own character, you can. So that's one of the aspects. Now, if they're not going to use the pre-made character sheets, make sure to make those photocopies of the, of the pre-made ones and cut out the background section on the back of them because it gives them a tie-in or a link to the adventure and you're going to find that really, really useful later on. Next up, make photocopies of the monster stat blocks that are in the back of the adventure. One of the most annoying aspects of running the game is always having to flip back and forth through the book. And you'll be finding that you'll have to flip back and forth many, many times from the wherever you are in the adventure to the back where all the monster stat blocks if it turns into a combat. Now there's a reason why they don't include them where you need them. It's because they don't assume that everything is going to be a combat and also too it's actually for easy reference. It now makes it very simple for you to photocopy them, cut out those photocopies, spend a little, I mean it's like 20 cents in New Zealand, I don't know how expensive it is uh, in your country, but it's not that expensive. Just cut them out and you can uh, stick those onto a bit of uh, cereal box um, cardboard or any kind of cardboard you like. And then it's, it's simple enough to clip those little suckers onto your Dungeon Master screen if you have a Dungeon Master screen or you can have more than one laid out at a time so you can access all the information you might want at any given time. I really do highly recommend doing this. It's, it's great for quick reference. It will make your life a lot easier. And I know people have talked about, well, you can buy these index cards and then you write out the stat block for the monster on them. And I don't recommend doing that because one, you've just chewed up more time than you really needed to writing out something that's already been typed out. When it would probably be cheaper for you to photocopy those pages cut them out and stick them onto cardboard so that's less time and it's probably going to cost less because the index cards are probably more expensive than making a photocopy so I wouldn't even bother doing that sort of thing okay forget about the index cards when it comes to Gundren Rockseeker he is the patron he's the one who gives the quest so it's a good idea to have some some familiarity you need to know the character a little bit so that you can answer questions the players will have about Gundren. Because some players won't ask questions, but some players will. Which is why I've done a video on the topic, and you can check it. It'll be under the Lost Mine of Fandelva DM Guide. It's a, a series I'm doing. I've already done a video covering that, and you can check that out if you want. On top of that, don't forget, Gundren's not the only character in the entire st story. He is certainly one who gives the initial um, story, but you've also got a major villain, and that major villain needs to be highlighted. And that is Nesna, the Black Spider. So put yourself into the mind of Nesna. Make sure you have a, a reasonable understanding about why Nesna is doing what he's doing. And what is Nesna doing in the background as the player's characters are journeying through your adventure? Now I'm going to, I haven't done a video on Nesna yet, but I will in the future. It will come, don't worry. I just don't feel like I need to deal with it just yet. There's rather a lot to cover as it is. So Nesna is certainly a major uh, NPC that you need to have a little bit of information written down about. Okay. When it comes to preparing and making notes for your adventure, uh, I don't really encourage you to make a lot of notes, but I find that those, those small post-it stick-on notes placed in the adventure, on the actual adventure book, are really helpful. Uh, make sure everything is, sh is written down in shorthand. Make it note form rather than full sentences. Just the important details that you need to remember for whatever. Otherwise, you're going to wind up having to read through sections and sometimes those blocks of text are quite big and if you have just a few notes written on the side highlighting the things you need to know. It might be as simple as um, how many monsters are in a room or what a particular character is going to do uh, given you know certain circumstances or it might be just um, key plot points 
uh, near the beginning of the adventure. There's always something. I'm not going to tell you which things it has to be because every dungeon master is different. Every dungeon master views certain aspects slightly differently to other dungeon masters. And so you'll pick out the stuff that's important to you and then run it as you see fit. All right, here it comes. Eventually there's going to be some sort of combat. So having a some sort of basic understanding of how to use your monsters in combat is actually going to be quite important to you. And my suggestion is go and talk to other dungeon masters about how to run monsters. And I've done a few monster tactic videos which you can go and check out. Um, but it's not unreasonable to go and search on the internet for what other people have done. Now there is a really good website that I recommend you going and checking out for any information regarding monster tactics. I've taken a lot of information from that website myself for my own videos and you will probably find it incredibly useful. And that particular website is called The Monsters Know. And if you're doing a search for it, the easiest way to find it is probably to type in D&D 5e Monster Tactics. And it'll be the first website that probably comes up. The Monsters Know, all together. Okay, and this guy, the tactics for the monsters aren't perfect, but he does give you some idea of how to run your monster uh, when you get into combat. Also, check out slyflourish.com for advice on running the beginning of the Lost Mine of Fandelver, and I will include that down in the description. Also, check out neuronphaser.com. He has a more comprehensive um, advice and suggestions for running the Lost Mine of Fandelver pretty much from the beginning to the end. That will cover pretty much all of the bits and pieces that you need to run your adventure uh, with a few sort of changes. I mean, look, nothing's going to work out exactly the way you expected, so don't expect it to do that. It doesn't work that way. Everything is slightly different in some way. But my advice is also make sure you have a copy of the adventure map. Now, the one they give you is for the Dungeon Master, so you don't want to give that to the players. But the map you can see on the screen right now is designed for the players. And you can download that. I got it off the internet. It was not hard to find. I'm not going to provide a link to it or anything like that, because honestly, if you just type in Lost Mine of Fandalva and uh, map, it'll come up. And you'll see there's probably only a couple of options. There's also a guy who uh, sells this map high resolution, if you want to print it out, high resolution. And I think it's Mike Shelley. I've talked about him before. You'll find his link down in the description as well. After that, all you need to go and do is, remember, you need to have your basics, okay? Just remember the basics. Don't worry about all the details, just the basics. Collect your gear, make sure you have your dice or your phone with your dice roller on it, your pens, your pencils, some paper, your maps if you're going to be using maps, miniatures if you're going to be using miniatures or tokens or pawns or whatever it is. And it's very important to have a session zero. I know a lot of people aren't really keen on doing that because you're not actually playing the game. But very, very important. And there's a lot of different reasons for doing that. And honestly, you, you won't regret running a session zero. Get yourself a checklist. Uh, there's lots of people who have created checklists and advice on running session zeros. I know I haven't done a video on the topic myself, but it doesn't matter. Run a session zero. Make sure the players are on the same page. You know, make sure you're building that they're building characters together if they're not using the pre-made um, pre characters that are available in the actual adventure. And, and make sure they have a, a chance to actually um, have a discussion. So um, at the very beginning, before you're running your adventure, that will alleviate a lot of hassles for you, particularly if there are players who are looking for a type of game you don't really want to run or they're not really interested in this type of adventure. I find that highly unlikely, but it can happen. This adventure is a sandbox, so expect your players to do the unexpected and go off the page, okay? It's designed to be able to allow for that. It's designed like an old school adventure, which essentially means that you get a small adventure, everything is pretty tightly packed, um, if you get lost or uh, you can find things fairly easily because there isn't a lot of information to read to find what you need for the, the location they're currently exploring or in and you're done. Okay, when it comes to NPCs and I'm, 
I'm not going to uh, suggest that uh, the NPCs have to be, you need to spend a lot of time on it, but you will need to spend a little bit of time on them. So Fandolin has a lot of NPCs, and there are other NPCs scattered throughout the adventure, but the Fandolin NPCs, make sure that you have their name and you understand what their link is in the adventure. So what is the hook, the information they will give the players at some point? I would make just a quick note of their name and then what the hook is that they give. Don't obviously try to present all the hooks all at once, but as you're going through your list, you can cross things off. The key NPCs might need a few notes, and I would suggest uh, the adventure provides a fair amount of information on some of the NPCs, not all of them, but write down key motivations. If there's one motivation, that's great, and that's always probably better. Personality traits, if they have any ideals, bonds, and flaws. You don't have to have all of that, but you will have to have at least some motivations and some personality trait to um, build into the character that you'll present to your players. And I'm not talking about talking in an accent. What I'm talking about is simply playing the character in such a way that it seems interesting to the players and not all exactly the same. That's really all there is to it. There's not an awful lot else to, uh, to running this adventure, which I know sounds like, well, you know, there, there must be more. But if it, when it comes to NPCs, my advice to you, particularly if you're stuck with writing notes, is get yourself some Rory Story Cubes, roll some dice, roll three dice, and use those to build your, um, or even four dice, to build the aspects, just like a player character, their personality, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Or you can use the random chart on the Dungeon Master screen, the first one for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, not the reincarnated one, the first one, and it has a chart will allow you to create your own NPC um, bits and pieces if the adventure doesn't include enough information or detail. Pictures are super useful. I find that if I jump on the internet and I find a picture that's suitable um, for that NPC, that can help a lot. Um, you can spend an awful lot of time trawling the internet trying to make that happen, so just be, be wary about how much time you sink into that. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in terms of preparing for this adventure, and I hope that you found it useful or interesting in some way, and if you did, great, please share and like the video. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell button to be notified when I publish a new video and when I do a live stream. If you want to support my channel, you supported my channel by watching this content today, and I do thank you. Uh, if you watch more of my videos, and I do have more videos on the Lost Mine of Fandelva, and there will be more coming in the future, um, you can you can check those out. That will help support me. I get a bit of AdSense revenue off that. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description you'll find affiliate links where you can buy stuff from Amazon, the Book Depository. I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price. You don't have to buy the thing that I have linked to. Just go through the link and then buy whatever it is you want to um, um, buy. And that helps support the channel. So I do more of this sort of thing. And look, stay in the chat box if you're part of the live stream. Stay around because we will have a talk and um, I will answer questions, listen to your feedback, and we'll build out as much information as we possibly can. Maybe I've missed something, you never know. It's always possible. Um, if you're not part of the live stream, down in the comments for your feedback, your questions, and uh, anything you would like to add that you feel I, I might have missed, you can put that all down there. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.